Good morning, good morning. Give me a few minutes here to tag a few people. See if we can do that. Share to groups, let's go. Okay, let's tag my friends here. Do I have friends? Yes, let's see who we got here. Beautiful day outside today, guys. It's going to be 90 degrees. Can you believe that? It was in the 60s yesterday, the day before yesterday, and today it's going to be in the 90s. Just hold on a few seconds here as I try to tag a few people that might be interested. I don't know anybody want to listen to me anyway. I tagged my wife, so she has to listen to me. How's that? Yeah, that's what I think. Let's see, PJ, Sheldon. Tag Mr. Ronald Rose there. It's uh, getting ready to be some good stuff happening, guys. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. I'm looking forward to Great time in the Lord. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Hold on one second, folks. I'm almost got this done. Let's see. Is there, yeah, let's get a couple more people here. All right. That's a lot of people right there. So anyway, I just want to touch base with some folks. Glenn, let's go. Mike Morris, and cousin Randy. Hey, anyway, I don't know if you can see me, hear me, all that good stuff. Yeah, we've been having some issues with our internet. Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Michelle. Let's see who we got on our Hi, Paula. Cheryl. Hey, Jackie, how's your dad doing? All righty, we are in Ephesians chapter 4. Paul's going to shift uh, a little bit here. Uh, you know, Ephesians chapter 1 through 3, he's been talking to us. Now he's going to tell us how we should live and how we should walk and the things we should do. Uh, continue to pray for the Rhodes and Garcia family, uh, Robert's. Bob Garcia's, Robert Garcia's uh, wife passed away uh, Monday night. Uh, this is Ronnie and Frida's daughter. Ronnie was a deacon here, and they got married in this church way back when. Uh, uh, Frida's dad and Ronnie's uh, grandpa was uh, assistant pastor here for years. Uh, so we just need to continue to pray for the family. Uh, you know, just a heartbreak loss. Uh, you know, just unexpected and just all that good stuff that goes along with the loss of a loved one and you know, so just continue to pray for the family. Continue to pray for the prayer requests that have been made known. A lot of people are going through it. Continue to lift my buddy uh, Jay Mitchell up as he still gets uh, doing better. Uh, but just just continue to pray for him. Pray for his wife, Tamara. Uh, just pray for everyone. we uh, going through, uh, you know, addiction battles. Just all the stuff that's happening in our world. Pray for our, you got to pray for our president. <laughs> I, I didn't listen to any, but I, I see the stuff on, uh, you know, Facebook and stuff. We need lots of prayer for our country. Uh, pray for our, our state of California. Pray for whatever state your governor is, our local stuff. But let's open up in a word of prayer. Uh, I'm on a little bit early, a little bit late also, too. We got here early, but uh, we've been doing some things. 
Uh, pray for Vicky as truck. You know, Monday night I talked about being uh, grateful. Uh, her alternator went out, and uh, we finally got it pulled off this morning. I'm going to take it over and get it dropped off and get it rebuilt. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than redoing, uh, buying a used one or a remanufactured or all that good stuff. But anyway, you pray for us. Pray for our school. Pray for the things that be taking place here. Uh, good morning, Michael. Good morning, Bob. Uh, really praying for you, man. Uh, my heart breaks for you. I, I am so sorry, man. I, I think of you and Rhonda, and I just think of, uh, I just appreciate you guys. Praying for your boys, too, huh? And Ronnie and Frida. Ah, Father, we just come before you, Lord, and you know my heart aches. My heart breaks for uh, Bobby, Lord, and, and uh, his sons, uh, for his family, Lord, his, for Ronnie and Frida. Lord, I ask you just to minister to them, Lord, and help them through this. Father, you're the only way we can get through anything like this. And now, Lord, as we look into your word this morning, you give us what we stand in need of for biblical directions for daily living, that you would help us to endure the, this, the trials, the temptations, and the heartaches of this world. Father, you give us guidance. You give us help. But, Father, right now, for those that are battling with addictions, those that are battling with relationships, finances, Father, put your hand upon them. Father God, I pray for our president right now that you minister to him. I ask you, Father, fall upon him Bring men and women who will place him in a point of, of coming to a biblical knowledge of what and how this country should be run. And Father, the same for our vice president and our governor here in California. For each local government, the city councils, Father, we need revival, Lord. And it's going to start when the church wakes up and starts doing what it's supposed to do. We ask you right now, give us wisdom as we look into your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anyway, guys, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, going to talk about living for God's glory. Uh, and it just starts off the very first verse in Ephesians 4. It says, there, I therefore, remember, when you always, it's always, when you see therefore, we've got to see what it's there for. Uh, and, and it's what I've always been taught. It says, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthily of the calling which you are called. You know, uh, the first three chapters, he's talked to us about... Uh, you know, how to live, the rec- and, and, uh, not how to live, but, you know, uh, reconciliation. And, uh, and so as we find this, he says, to walk worthy of the calling which you are called. You know, we don't walk, how would I say it? We don't walk worthy so God will love us. That would be works. We walk worthily because of what he does, because he does love us. We and because he does love us, we can walk worthily for him. Uh, you know, and, and, there, and there's going to be temptations, there's going to be struggles. But the bottom line is I am a Christian by choice. I have chosen to serve and live a life of Christianity, our Christ follower. And so we see this. And, and so we look at this and the idea is clear that we wants us to walk worthy of the calling which is before us. What is that calling? And then he's going to tell us how to walk. In verse 2 and 3 of Ephesians chapter 4, with all lowliness and gentleness and long with long suffering, bearing with one another's in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. With lowliness and gentleness. That's like being humble. I mean, lowliness was associated probably with bad things before being a low life. <laughs> but, you know, in Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, it says, Therefore, it is in any consolation in Christ, if any comfort or love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affliction of mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, one mind. Let nothing be done without, with, through self-ambition or conceit, but with lowliness of mind, let each other esteem others better than himself. Let each of us look out not only for his own interest, but also the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, I'm sorry, who being a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Let me get down here. But made himself in no reputation, taking the form of the likeness of men and coming in the likeness of men. Verse 8, 
of Philippians chapter 2, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Verse 9 of Philippians chapter 2. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. At the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. And that's what it's saying here. Just it's that, that lowliness, that humbleness. It says with gentleness. We are to, good morning, Tessie. We are to be gentle with gentleness. And you know, sometimes I'm not very gentle with my words. My wife tells me this all the time. Uh, it's not what you said. It's how you said it and the tone you said it and with the judgmental attitude that you had when you said it. Uh, what I said might have been right. But there was no gentleness in it. It was harsh and it was abrupt. Uh, just because it's right, uh, there's a proper way of saying it. Good morning, really. So I have to be careful that I'm with humbleness and lowliness. And then with long suffering, that I just don't, uh, you know, when something is not going my way, sometimes we become short. Uh, if I'm having a bad day, we become short instead of long-suffering and getting through. Because, see, Jesus was long-suffering with us. And, you know, and we see this, that we need to be long-suffering with others. It says, with lowliness or humbleness and gentleness and long-suffering. You know, how many times can someone offend you a day? Seven times 70. That is a whole lot. 490. That is a lot in one day. <laughs> one day. So that's long suffering and then bearing with one another in love. You know, Jesus gave us this, you know, over and over. You hear me say this. He said, you know, that you love one another, that you love one another. And again, that that is the key. Bearing, long suffering, gentleness, long suffering, bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity. What's more important, me being right or we having unity together? You know, and again, I have to be careful with my gentleness uh, we need to be careful with our gentleness and how we do this, that bearing one another and the long suffering. You do that. And then sometimes we know that when we humble and give an uh, attitude toward each other that it is accepting. Why do we do that? It says why? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Endeavoring to keep the uni unity of spirit of what? In the bond of peace. Unity. Uh, not unity is not uniformity. We get confused that everyone must look like I look and talk like I talk. No, God has made us a very diverse group for a reason. And we're going to reach different people, you and I, and we're going to see and, and I die. And I hate it when people say, well, there's cliques in the church. They're not cliques. We just bear witness with people and we have same things in commonality. Uh, it's easy to think they're cliques, but if people like to ride motorcycles and or dirt bikes, they can hang out with guys that like to ride dirt bikes. If they like to go to the ocean and surf, they hang out with people who surf. And now there's some people who like to do a little bit of everything, and and so we partake on like that. But when we were in high school, do you remember that? You'd have the socials, you'd have the geeks, and the nerds, you'd have the, the, the jocks, you'd have the, you know, the, the party guys, and, you know, and so we all fit in somewhere, or we try to fit in. And see, but, you know, if you were like me, you try to bounce all over, I, I, you know, and, and just, you know, do what your own thing. And so, but again, you had the surfers, the jocks, the Ch Ch Chicanos, the, the lowriders. I mean, we had all this stuff. Were they cliques? No. People find comfort and have, when we have things that are the same. And the, keeping the, the spirit of the unity, the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace. Uh, the unity of the Spirit, you know, we are not uniform, but we are in unity with the Spirit. God draws us together. Uh, God, we have one commonality, and that's Christ Jesus, that every, nung, every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow. He is our Savior, so that's the, the Spirit that draws us. Now, we might have other different things that we do to, that are different from each other, and so we might be drawn to other people, but we still have that bond of Spirit of peace. And let's look down at verse 4. Through six, it you know gives the the description of unity in the church. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, uh, and Father of all, who is above all 
and through all and in you all. You didn't know Paul was Texan, huh, y'all? So uh, he's, he's from the south, it sounds like here. And so there's one body, one spirit. We are in the body of Christ. Now remember, it talks about in Corinthians, we are different pieces of the body. Christ is the head. We are each fitted differently in the body, and the body needs everything that's there. And we need all of it. And so there's one body, one spirit, and that spirit's the Holy Spirit. One hope. That hope is Jesus Christ, our calling. Uh, one Lord. That is Lord God you know, even there's, there's a triune, there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, one faith, and that's our faith. And then you can't, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Uh, and one Father, God the Father, you know, and we know that. And each of these common things, it's it very important for us to understand that we are to understand that he said he has called us in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith. Uh, one baptism. Now, listen, uh, there are people who want to talk about the baptism. Uh, what he's talking about is the water baptism, the outward sign, and the, not the, the inward sign. Now, there are some people who say that you there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes in, to you as soon as you receive Christ. Now, some people say there's the evidence of that by the working and speaking in tongues. You know, I, I, I don't, you know, that's great. If you got that gift, praise God. But the baptism here is the outward baptism. He's talking about what taking place inward. Uh, Matthew talks about it. Matthew chapter 3, the baptism of the Spirit. It, it says, or, or the Holy Spirit, which you're baptized with. Let's see if my... It says, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier. Uh, than I, who will, sandals I am not worthy to carry, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John the Baptist saying, hey, I'm just baptizing you with water. Acts chapter 1, verses 5. Let's see if I can open that up. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Okay? And look at Acts chapter 11, verse 16. And then I remembered the words of the Lord. He said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay, and I believe that happens when you receive Christ as your Savior. He says, I've given you. He had to go away. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But but we receive that as soon as we receive Christ as our Savior. And we ask for forgiveness and we have asked for repentance. Okay, let's drop down to verse 7 to 10. It will help us understand maybe a little more of this, uh, the way God works in unity uh, and gives us spiritual gifts and leadership of the church and give us some direction. It says, But of each of us, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, When he ascended on high, he led captives, captivity captive, and he gave gifts to, to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill these things. Grace was given to each of us according to the gifts that God gives us. And each of us have gifts. You know, the, the, we have spiritual gifts. And I had a guy tell me, well, I have all of them. Then that would make you God. <laughs> yeah. You don't have all the spiritual gifts, guys. Uh, then you would be perfect. And uh, you might think that, but I don't think so. But here he said, he, you know, he's going to give us the gift. And, and so let's drop down to verse 12, 11 and 12, and let's find out what these are. And, and how the, for the leadership of this. And it's not going to tell us the gifts, and we're not going to the spiritual gifts right now, but we're going to talk about it. It says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He himself, who's that? Jesus established that these offices are important and appointed by him. Okay, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, teachers. Okay, apostles, we know that they are special ambassadors that are appointed by God. And Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 says this, Having built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. Uh, and the apostles were the ones that were supposed to see, uh, see Christ 
firsthand. And so, you know, but the prophets are the one who speak the word of God and are consistent on the foundation built upon the word of the Old and New Testament and, and provide God, provide people with some guidance through the word. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29, let two or three prophets speak. Let them, let the others judge. Okay, so the apostles, now evangelists. You now, the evangelist is someone who goes out and is gifted in preaching the good news for salvation. Uh, Billy Graham was an evangelist. We see uh, um, Craig Laurie does the evangelist work. But Paul told Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. You may not be an evangelist, but we're all required to do the work of an evangelist. That means we are to share the good news unto salvation for others. It's by the foolishness of preaching that men must be saved. And how can they preach unless they be sent? And it said, beautiful are the feet that carry the good news. It tells us that. And so it says, then he gave us pastors, teachers. And these, these are combined together uh, that we must teach the word and constantly give out the word of God. And that's what I try to do here. I'm not very good at it. There's people who are much, much better at this stuff than I am. But I, I believe what the Word of God says. I stand upon the Word of God. And I believe the best way to interpret the Word of God is through the Word of God. Now, I do have my opinions. I do have my insights. And I do have some knowledge from learning over the 30 years of pastoring and going and taking classes and stuff. And reading. Uh, you're, you're, when, you, <laughs> when I was in school, I didn't like school. I liked football. I liked it. But when I got right with God, something made me get excited about the Word of God and studying about the things of God. And so I'll read different commentaries, different books. Uh, you must be a forever learner is what I found out. And uh, so, but he gave us pastors, teachers, so that we could do what? Help share the Word. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, it says, But one and the same Spirit works in all these distributing to each other, one individual as he wills. God's going to give us these gifts as he wills. And for what? For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. That's the bottom line. All these things were given for one reason, for the equipping of the saints, that you or me are saints. Old Pastor J. Vernon McGee says, you're either a saint or an ain't. You either got God in your heart or you don't got God in your heart. And if you ain't got God in your heart, then guess what? It don't matter to you anyway. So what it's saying is that we are to equip each other for what? The work of the ministry. See, now, I told you this, and you hear me say this in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that therefore, if any man be, therefore, what? What is it therefore? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You hear us talk about, oh, I'm a new creation. But we stop right there too often, and we don't read verse 18, that he gives us the ministry of reconciliation in the King James, and the New King James says that. He has given us the task of reconciling the world to Christ, and Christ will reconcile us to God. So we have a ministry, and that is what? The work, the ministry, equipping, and that is learning the words and touching the words. And, and actually, and, and it says equipping is the word to be put right. It's actually what it says in the, in the commentary that it's as setting a broke bone and making a minute. And when a bone has been broken, it's been minute and it's done right, it becomes stronger. And so that's what it's saying. We need to be, for the work of the ministry, we need to become stronger. And you heard me say this in Genesis chapter 14, verse 14. Uh, it talked about that Abram had 318 men trained. What would happen, church, if we started training ourselves for spiritual warfare? And we got ready, whether it be men and women, and we're studying and we're doing the work of the ministry, reaching the lost at all costs. Each one reach one and trying to get them to a place of a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's the work of the ministry that we are to teach and to help and to convert those who are unknown to Christ. Christ knows them, but they don't know Christ. And they don't understand why we do what we do. And you have the greatest thing and the greatest tool is your testimony. Your testimony. How you got to where you're at. Paul always talks about the road to Damascus. How did, what's your Damascus experience? And that's what you need to share with people. And especially people who have known you for a while. They see transformation in you. Okay, let's drop down to verse 13 through 16. Uh, there's a desire of the goal of God's work to the church leadership to equip the saints. It says, Till we all come to the unity of one of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to be 
to a perfect man and to the measure and statue of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, but the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting, speaking the truth and love that you may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ from who the whole body joined and knitted together that by what every joint supplies according to effectively working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body and edifying of itself in love until we come together in the unity. Over and over again he says the unity. Now again that's not uniformity. We get that confused. The unity is the love of Jesus and the faith in Christ. And it's without faith, it's, impar- it's impossible to please God. And the knowledge of his son, learning what he is to equip us. Why? That we become mature, not no longer children, tossed to and fro. You know, the one word a kid has, and because they're selfish, mine, mine, mine. And we become selfish when it's all about us. That's why we need to give it away. Uh, and so we should no longer be as children, tossed to and fro and carried by everyone. Dog. You know, we need to get steadfast, get in a place where you can get fed by the Word of God, and then you can grow in the Word, and then you can help others grow in the Word. That we should know that. It says, by the trickery of men. But this is what I like. But speaking the truth in love. See, my wife says, it's not what you said, but did you say it in love? It's how you said it, and the tone you said it in, and with a judgmental attitude. Good morning, Ronnie. And so I have to be, make sure that I'm speaking the truth in love. Now, I could be speaking the truth to someone, but if I'm harsh and condemning, they're not going to receive it. But if I bring some love on that and compassion and empathy, they will be more apt to hear it from me. That we may grow up in all things in Him who is the head. We need to grow up. Church, it's time to quit being babies. It's time to get off the bottle, get in the meat, and get out there and train. You know, you, you, we we go out and we have to work the muscles. We have to train to get stronger. We have to move. Uh, I have been very sedentary during this last year with the, the COVID. I have not done my walking. I've not got in the pool exercise. I put on some weight. So now I have to make a determination how to get it off. And the only way I know to get it off is you have to do some exercise. You know, and it means not, you know, the exercise jumping to conclusions. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but I need to do the what's right before God. It says, according to effective work with, by which we, the part does our share. The body is fitted together and each part carries its load. Each part is important. And so we see that. And let's talk about verse 19, or 17 through 19, talking about putting off the old man and putting on the new. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is the blindness of their hearts, whom being who being past feelings has given themselves over to lewdness and to the works of uncleanness and greediness. Therefore, remember what it's there for? We've got to go see what it's there for. Go back to first, you know, verse 1 through 6. Well, do we must walk accordingly? You know, and with what? All the stuff it talked about. And it shared with us in verse 1 through 6. He said, we need to what? It says, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, be were called with lowliness, gentleness, long-suffering, for bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the peace and the bond of peace, Unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, that they're called in one hope, one calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father, and who is above all. Again, that's what he's saying there. What is it there for? We need to understand no longer walk as we no long no longer walk as the rest of the world walk. Thanks, Michael. I'll have a great day. So we need to walk the way God wants us to walk and get out of darkness. And out of the blindness of our hearts. You know, the, the God of this world has blinded us. And again, we need to understand the past feelings. Let's drop down to verse 20 to 24. But you have not, but you have not so learned Christ, but 
if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be may put on the new man which is created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. We need to put off the old man. Second Corinthians 5, Behold, all things become new. The old man has passed away. That you have learned, that we have learned in Christ that we to be and walk worthily. And we need to understand, we, that's why we need to get into the Word of God. Uh, we do it over and over again. Again, you've talked about that new creation. You heard me talk about that. Put on that new man. Okay, let's drop down to 25 to 32 and close this thing out. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that may have something to give who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for the necessity for edification that ye may impart grace into the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you have sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, for Christ's sake, has forgave you. Therefore, what? Put away lying. Lying to other people and to yourself. If the biggest person we lie to is ourselves. It's okay. The devil tells us and tricks us. It says, be angry. Now, angry is a true emotion. You're going to get angry. But how you handle it and what you do with that anger is what makes a difference. It says, be angry and sin not. Most of the time, when we get angry, we'll do something stupid, something that we regret. We'll say things we shouldn't say and we wish we hadn't said. And then what it does, it brings harm to our our testimony it brings harm to our witness and so what happens is we have sinned this, to them that know to do good and do it to not it is sin but it says do not let the sun go down on your wrath man there's times me and my wife have to stand up stay up and just continue to talk uh and give no place to the devil don't give him any opportunity he says him still still no longer uh put your hands to do what's right and do the good things let him labor, it says. Then here's the one that I can get myself in trouble real quick. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Only what is good for necessary for edification. That one, Lynn, is an ouch. Because you know what? When you get angry, we get corruptible. We say corrupt things. We'll drop words that we would never drop normally. And again, the Bible, I know it says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And I know and all that stuff. But every once in a while, we, that frustrated, we slip of the and we let people have it. And we blow up and we just blow all over them. But is it edifying God? Is it helping your testimony and your witness? Not at all. And it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And when we do that, we do grieve the Holy Spirit. And when we grieve the Holy Spirit, guess what? We get under conviction because we've been filled with the Spirit. We receive the Spirit. We've been baptized in the Spirit when we receive Christ. And man, when I do things that are stupid and God gets a hold of me, like I talked about that lady the other day about the parking and how God dealt with me. Like I saw her today and my wife was in the, in the van with us and I waved at her. She waved back with a big smile. I said, she's my friend now. Because I told her I was sorry and I was a knucklehead. You know, and I brought a bad testimony and a bad witness because I was stubborn and not edifying God. And I was bringing and grieving the Holy Spirit. It was said, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you. Man, we can get bitter at people quickly because we have resentment against them or we're mad at them. Wrath just speaks of outburst of the moment. And that's that wrath is that you know, when you're angry, you have that outburst, and you're just like, oh, and guess what? Did anybody, you know anybody like that? Yeah, forgive me, Lord, right? 
And it says, be put away. But this is what it says. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted and forgiving one another. You know, God has called us to have compassion and empathy on people. Again, sometimes the hardest people to deal with is, is your family. Because they know how to push your buttons. They know how to shake your chain. And, you know, we got to let, let them live where our goat's at. And they want to get at our goat. And so we find that. But we need to work at being kind to one another. And, man, my empathy goes off the chart. When I see people hurting, I break for them. I hurt for them. And my heart breaks right now. When I think about uh, Bob going through this with his sons and his uh, in-laws, man, my heart breaks for him. And uh, it is uh, be tenderhearted at forgiving one another. I had to ask that lady to forgive me, and, and she was deaf, so this is forgive me. And I had to tell her, Jesus loves her. And I was not a very good witness. And man, you know what? She forgave me, and she told me she accepted my apology and the way I acted and what I did. And uh, man, I'll tell you what. So it's just, just as God and Christ forgave you. Seven times 70 in one day. Ha. Huh. God doesn't hold his anger against us. He's long-suffering. He forgives us. And when you ask for forgiveness, he said he casts our sins as far as the east from the west, and he recalls them no more. God says, hey, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And he's talking to the church. God forgives our sins. He forgives our shortcomings. He give, forgives us if we ask him. So we are to forgive others, and we are to forgive them and reach out to them and look for reconciliation. You know, uh, we're doing a step study uh, and doing our inventory and then making amends and stuff. And if you've never done that and you went back to your life, whether you were through uh, addiction or things, but if you just, just did an inventory of uh, people that you have harmed or hurt over your years, and then you make a list of them and then try to make amends to them where, where you can, where it's not going to hurt them or anything, and just ask them to forgive you. That's biblical. You know, and we should do that. And we should ask God to help us. You know, if anyone is able to forgive, it's us as Christians. And so we need to understand that God wants us to seek out those that we can forgive and to forgive others. If someone's hurt you, let them know you forgive them. They may not even know they even hurt you. But you know what? If you've hurt somebody, isn't it time that you ask them to forgive you? Well, guys, that gets us to the chapter four. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted and forgiving one another. Uh, we'll close out today with some prayer. Uh, some important dates. Remember, uh, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, Monday nights, every Monday night, celebrate recovery. We have child care for uh, 12 and under. And then we also have... Uh, Tuesday night Bible study. This Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, we are doing a planning meeting for uh, Rockin' the Way in June. Uh, May 20th, we have our uh, open house here. Uh, we have 5 o'clock to 5.30, we'll have refreshments. And then we'll come in at 5.30. The kids will have a few songs. They'll do their speeches. And then from there, uh, we'll have open enrollment. And then we'll have some other things going on. But we'd love to have you there on May 23rd, Sunday, May 23rd. We're going to do a cake auction, bake auction uh, to raise some money for our Rock in the Way. Uh, come and be here uh, Tuesday night, uh, May 2nd, uh, or not May 2nd, May 4th, whatever it is. Yeah, May 4th uh, for uh, Bible st- uh, <laughs> for a planning meeting for Rock in the Way, and then Bible studies Tuesday night. Anyway, let's pray. And thank you guys for letting me give you biblical directions for daily living. Hopefully, this made sense. Uh, learn to walk worthy, and learn to forgive. Father God, we just come before you right now, and we just ask you right now to continue to fall upon us. Uh, Help us not to be and to mess up our testimony, our witness, uh, not to blow up on people, to blow all over everybody, but learn to forgive, and then ask for forgiveness, and then to humble ourselves, Father, and to be long-suffering, being kind and tenderhearted. Father, I ask you right now, give us what we stand in need of today, that we will be your men, your women, your children. And Father, I ask you right now that you continue to help us to be all that we can be for you. As we pray pray the prayer, Jabez, Lord, that you bless us indeed, that you enlarge or expand our territory. You would keep us from harm. You keep us from harming others. 
And then, Father, that you would use us for your kingdom's sake. Father, that you would let us be your hands, your feet, your eyes, and your mouthpiece to bring build up people with words of encouragement, to be kind and tenderhearted. So today, Father, use me to reach somebody for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. And hey, you can find us also on YouTube. Uh, it's the Way Fellowship. Look for the, the compass. Uh, there's a couple other Way Fellowship out there. Look for the green compass, the Way Fellowship. You'll see it uh, out there and you'll find us um, on YouTube. You can share that with anybody. Sign up for our YouTube channel. Eventually I can go live on YouTube and stream this live YouTube, uh, Facebook and Instagram at the same time. Uh, love you guys. Have a great, great day. Continue to pray for Jackie's dad. Pray for Tom and Kathy's mom. Pray for them and just uh, continue to pray. And tomorrow we'll be in Ephesians chapter 5. It's a great chapter. Love you guys. Have a great day. God bless.